Well, good morning. How are we doing? Good. Well, my name is Lauren. If it's your very first time here, we are so glad that you're here. And I hope that you've already had such a great morning. I mean, it's hard not to when we have knockout and gaga ball happening, and then we play a fun egg toss game, and then we sing some songs, and it's just already been such a fun, great morning. And that is our hope every week for transit, that you come here, and it's fun, and it's inviting, and it's welcoming, because we truly want transit to be the most welcoming space for you. Because unfortunately, most of us in the room know what it's like to walk into a room that isn't so inviting, right? That isn't so welcoming. That makes us feel a little awkward. And we never want that to be transit. I mean, I remember uh, I moved from Florida to Georgia in the middle of my seventh grade year. And so I started at a brand new school in a brand new state, city, the whole thing in November of my seventh grade year, which is just the worst time to start at a new school because you have the holidays and everyone already has their friends and it's towards the end of the semester. So I remember walking in to every class that day just not knowing where to sit, where to go, who to talk to. I didn't know how my locker worked. I didn't know where in the cafeteria I should go. And it was just that worst, like anxious feeling all day long. I mean, it's been 16 years since that day, and I still remember it like it was yesterday, because there's something about walking into a room and not knowing where to go, where to sit, who to talk to, that really just sticks with us. That feeling of feeling left out, of not feeling included, of not feeling welcome, those things just, they stick with us. I think it's fair to say that we all know how lonely it feels to be left out. We all know how lonely it can feel to just stand like in the back and not know who to talk to or where to go or stand like in the classroom and and see that everyone knows where they're sitting and not know where we should sit and who we should sit next to. We know how lonely it can feel. Or maybe you've seen a picture of all your friends hanging out and you never got the invite. And that feels really lonely. Or in PE, they did that horrible thing where you have to pick teams. Oh my gosh, that is like the nightmare of school in general. And you were the last to get picked. That happened to me. I remember when that happened to me. And it's so awkward. It's so embarrassing. It feels so lonely. Or maybe you just feel lonely. If you're being honest, you feel lonely at home. Your parents aren't home a lot. Maybe your siblings are older. They've moved out. And you just feel lonely. And we all know what it's like to feel new too. Maybe you've gone to a new school and you remember walking in and not knowing where to go, or you remember your first day in your small group, and even though everyone was so nice, you're still new. You still remember that feeling. And so between that feeling of loneliness and that feeling of being new, those feelings just stick. And if it's true for all of us that we've all experienced that before, if it's true for all of us that we remember how it feels, then it is true, I think, for every single person person we come in contact with. It's part of the human experience, is that we've all felt those feelings of loneliness, of being on the outside, not knowing where to go, not being invited in. Loneliness is at an all-time high in our country right now. It's a feeling that we've all endured. And this feeling, thankfully, isn't new. It's not a new concept to us. It didn't just come out of nowhere in the last few years. No, it's been around forever. This feeling of of loneliness or a feeling not included, those feelings have been around for all of time. And Jesus actually, he tells a parable about this feeling. And he talks about, hey, what do we do when we notice someone who seems a little lonely, who seems a little left out? What do we do? How do we react? And so he tells a parable, and a parable is a story that he made up. It's not true, but it's a parable to make a point. And he shares this parable, and we're going to jump in in Luke chapter 15. This is what he says. He says, then Jesus told them this parable. Suppose one of you, he was teaching to a group of people at this time, suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Doesn't he leave the 99 in the open country and go after the lost sheep? until he finds it. So just for a quick second, imagine you have 100 sheep. 
It's a lot of sheep. They just live in your bedroom, okay? A hundred sheep in your house. Your parents are totally cool with it. Just pretend for a second. You have a hundred sheep. That's a lot of sheep. And one leaves. But you've got 99 sheep to look after. So you're like, I don't know if I have time to go after this one sheep. I got 99. They're like in the kitchen. It's a whole thing. And I got to take care of these 99. But Jesus says, hey, a good shepherd goes after the one. So if the shepherd leaves the 99 sheep, that's a risk. Because like he said, they're in the open country. So it's not fenced in. They're not in a barn. They're not in your house. They are in an open field. And danger could happen. There could be bears, there could be foxes, there could be all sorts of things out there that could harm the sheep. And not only that, sheep are notorious for not being the smartest animal. I was reading an article last night about how they're actually super intelligent, but it was written by someone who has sheep, so that felt a little biased. But I feel like sometimes sheep just aren't super smart, which we all have our moments, let's be honest. I mean, just look at this sheep right here in this video. He gets stuck, guy helps him out, he's free, this is great, and then, yeah, so that could happen to some of the sheep that the shepherd leaves, it's a big risk. He leaves 99 of them just for one and something could happen to these 99. But Jesus goes on, he says this, And when he finds it, when the shepherd finds the sheep, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. How does he respond? Joyfully. He joyfully puts the sheep on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, rejoice with me. I have found my lost sheep. Now notice what he doesn't do. He doesn't find the sheep and embarrass him. He doesn't find the sheep and shame him. He doesn't find the sheep and immediately yells at him or gets him in trouble or says, hey, you can come back, but you can't hang out with the 99. No, he joyfully brings the sheep home. And Jesus goes on and he says, I tell you that in the same way, there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. And so you can look at this story, and there's so many things that Jesus is teaching us in this one story. But the thing that I notice is how the shepherd reacts, that he celebrates, just like God celebrated you when you turned to him. And if this story sounds familiar, it's because literally five minutes ago, we sang a song about this story that has these lyrics that say, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God, it chases me down, fights on found, it leaves the 99. The song we just sang is about this story and about how God loves us so much that he's willing to leave the 99 in order to find us, but not just find us, find whoever is lost. And when he does, Jesus tells us that the good shepherd celebrates and rejoices. And I think something that Jesus is telling us here is that everyone matters to God. Everyone matters to God, even if God doesn't matter to them. Everyone matters to God. And so if that's true, if that everyone matters to God and that God loves all of us enough to leave the 99 to come find us, to come find anyone who's lonely or lost or not included or feeling left out, if he is willing to risk all of that to come find the one, if that's true, that God loves us so much, then it shouldn't just stay with us. We should be sharing that. We should be telling people, hey, you matter to God. God loves you more than you could ever know. And a great way to do that, because that feels kind of crazy, right, to walk up to someone and be like, hello, did you know that you matter to God? And they're like, oh, no, thank you. But a great way to share that with them is to invite them to transit. And as you know, we have Double Dog Darathon in just a couple weeks, and that is a great opportunity to invite someone in. 
Because Double Dog Dare, if you remember, it's just, it's a ton of fun. And there's prizes and there's games and it's a great Sunday together and it's gonna be so much fun and it's a great, easy invite to someone who comes to mind when you think of, hey, who in my life could use some community? Who in my life could feel included here, could feel welcomed here, who needs what transit has to offer? And so I want you to think about this question is, who do you want to invite? But here's another question that I really want you to think about. And that question is, who do you want to be when someone new walks in the room? Who do you want to be? How do you want to react? Because here's what's true is that maybe you invite someone and they can't make it on Double Dog and it's a bummer, but they'll come another time. But someone in your small group is going to invite someone new to transit on April 24th and they're going to walk into your small group room. And who do you want to be? Do you want to be the one who celebrates, who's so joyful that they're here, who is so welcoming? Or do you want to be someone who makes it feel awkward for them or they feel unsure and they don't feel invited in? Who do you want to be? Because your reaction matters. How you welcome someone in matters. How you react to someone who walks into your room and walks into this room for the first time, it matters. I, uh, this weekend, which was kind of funny because I was thinking about this, I had an experience where I was the new person in a room. And this is really silly, but I went to Trader Joe's for the very first time in my life. And I'm changed forever. Um, I've already asked Ashlyn if we can go back on Friday because I was like, this was the best experience of my life. But I went to Trader Joe's and I bought a ton of things and I'm at the uh, cash register checking out and the cashier, her name was Jill. She's my new favorite person. I love her so much. And we're just talking and I mentioned that, yeah, this is my first time ever at Trader Joe's. And she was like, oh my gosh, can we celebrate you real quick? And I was like, oh, I, sure. And they have a bell. I did not know this. They have a bell at Trader Joe's where it's someone's first time. They ring it, and the whole staff cheers. And so I feel so welcomed. I'm like, Trader Joe's. Like, I'm so pumped to be in this grocery store. They gave me a free bag. She's like, are you going to come back? And I was like, yes, I am a raving fan of Trader Joe's now. And that is ridiculous, I know. But I felt so welcomed and so celebrated at a grocery store that's just gonna offer me some really good candy and frozen foods. But imagine if someone walks in those doors, someone walks in the doors to your small group room and they feel that welcomed and that celebrated and you have community to offer them, you have the truth of Jesus to offer them, you have the message of how much God loves them to offer them, imagine how life-changing that could be. Your reaction when someone new walks in matters. So, you're going to head to small group, and I want you to think about these two questions on your way in. Yes, we should be thinking about who we want to invite. Ashlyn talked about that last week. That's important to be thinking about that. But now I want you to think about this. Who do you want to be when someone new walks in the room? So before you go, I would love to pray for you. <laughs> Father, thank you so much for this day, God, for transit, for a place to come together to worship you, to learn more about you, God, to have fun. A place where we feel safe, where we feel included and welcome, God, we're just so, so grateful. And so, God, I just pray that as you put people on our hearts who we should invite in, God, I pray that you give us the courage to do so. That you give us the courage to reach out, to invite them in to Double Dog or to any Sunday in transit. And God, I pray that we are a group of people who when someone new walks in, they immediately feel welcomed. They immediately feel included because there's a lot on the line. And God, we know that everyone matters to you and we want to take that seriously. So Father, thank you for loving us, for chasing after us. God, we're so grateful. It's in your name we pray. Amen.